Welcome back, Wolfpack Vrillis here. We're taking a trip from Kalos to Hoenn and we're bringing Dragalge with us. Now, this Pokemon is really cool in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because it gets access to its hidden ability, Adaptability. Same type attack bonus is two times instead of 1.5 times. So every time you use a move that is the same type as your Pokemon that's using it, you get a 50% boost to your attack. But with Adaptability, it just makes it to where, ah, screw it, we're doubling that. So it's kind of like a super effective hit not coming from a same type attack bonus, which is actually really cool. Other than that, you pretty much get your Icy Wind, your standard, like, Oras Move Tutor stuff. But it doesn't matter because adaptability is where it's at. That's all that Dragalge ever wanted. So when we look at what else it does, just pick up the choice specs and go and start running away with the battle. Because Draco Meteor is going to be one of the biggest damage tools you have at your disposal. And it's just fairly absurd that Draco Meteor is going to neutral hit KO almost everything. And then you have good coverage for the rest of it. That we have access to Scald, Sludge Wave, and Hidden Power Fire. Now if you can't get hold of a Hidden Power Fire, you can always change that around to Dragon Pulse. It's going to get its adaptability boost, so it's still a very strong move to have if you don't want to try to hit breed for the Hidden Power. See, we still have a lot of just craziness going behind it. Scald is going to coverage out, that way you have something to use against Rock and Ground type Pokemon. And then Sludge Wave is going to be your other neutral effective thing, that 95 base power with choice specs, with a modest nature on 321 special attack, like, you're going to be very good against a lot of Pokemon, and Dragalge is pretty much just want to go and clean up. That you come in, use Sludge Wave, if they bring in something that kind of walls you out or that you can't immediately blow up, you just switch out into a tank, and then you just keep bringing in Dragalge as like a revenge Pokemon, and it's going to make your opponent have a very bad time, because you just throw out the Draco Meteor, and there's not many safe switches that your opponent has options to, that and pretty much anything else that you can use, because adaptability is just that strong. Now with the way that the EVs go, it's a really interesting spread because 56 on the speed seems like it really doesn't belong there or makes any sense, but when you actually break it down, it's for Azumarill. That Azumarill, if it's like hit point, attack invested with 4 points in speed, this outspeeds it and then you're going through a super effective sludge wave into its face and just obliterate it while outspeeding. So that's something really nice to be sitting on and you don't sacrifice too much tankiness for it. So after that you put the rest in your hit points and you're not expecting to be fast. Then you just endure that hit and then you KO them back. And that's kind of how you're going to want to play with this set on Dragalge. But wait, since Dragalge has such a low speed, maybe we can use that in our favor by going Trick Room. And I was thinking Bronzong... While we don't see too much Bronzong anymore, still a very excellent Trick Room Pokemon for this situation because if you think about it, Dragology is going to be using Sludge Wave mostly. Sludge Wave hits everything on the field. Bronzong, since it's a Steel type, is going to be immune to that and it's going to be a very reliable Trick Room setting Pokemon. So with this, we're going to throw on a Quiet Nature. With that Quiet Nature, now you're going to be the fastest, one of the fastest things on the field once Trick Room is active. You still get all of your full hit, hit points bulk, and you just throw out Sludge Waves. Life Orb is going to make it to where you can also change between Draco Meteor and Scald, and then Bronzong is still throwing out some good support. Now with this, I was thinking we could have like Trick Room, Confused Ray, uh, Gyro Ball, Explosion, that way you know, if you don't feel that you're going to KO with the Sludge Wave, just Gyro Ball that other Pokemon, that'll finish it off. Or you just go for the big boom and explosion, Confuse Ray to maybe just cause some disruption on your opponent's end. And you can also just kind of run some other things, like Reflect. You can bring Reflect because Dragalge has a really high special defense, 123 base. So if you're putting on the Reflect, it's going to not be taking too much damage on a special defensive scale. And then physically, it can endure that hit, and then it can just keep throwing out Sludge Waves, and you're going to eventually just win and clean up your opponent's Pokemon from there. Now, Dragalge can also be run as like some kind of crazy Toxic Spikes lead that's super tanky. I was thinking we just go bold nature, that way you max out your defense, max out your hit points, put the rest of the points in the special defense, and it's going to be very hard to knock you out. You can use black sludge because you're a poison type Pokemon, and then you have protect, so you just protect, get all of your health back, and then you get, just keep setting up. Toxic spikes plus dragon tail is also very, very brutal. That toxic spikes, you get that set up, your dragon tail, well that means the Pokemon coming in is going to be poison, and you can throw a Venoshock their way. You can also just kind of keep cycling out with dragon tail, depending on how you feel about it, and eventually you're just going to have like a lot of Pokemon that are poisoned on the opponent's side of the field, which is a really good thing for breaking sashes, just kind of burning down your opponent. And Venoshock has a very high amount of base damage. So when we do the math here, Adaptability is going to double this. But then Venoshock also gets doubled if the target's poisoned, which is why I don't really care about investing in the special attack too much, because with all that, it might not be a raw one-hit KO, but it's still going to be a very high amount of damage, and then the Toxic Spikes are still going to be in effect. Because the first layer is poison and then the second layer is toxic poison, I would only just care about one and just kind of see what happens. Now, it doesn't work on flying type Pokemon or levitate Pokemon, but I still think it's a pretty good thing to carry. And it's just a really interesting lead kind of idea that can turn into a lot of crazy options. Also, this set was submitted by Static Rodent. Um, I saw it in the comments section and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty decent. That you just go, you max out hit points, you go with that bold tankiness. This time, I was thinking about Modest Nature. 
That way we're at least boosting our special attack in some way. And then we just throw the extra point there. Now we're actually looking at a decent amount of damage. And it's pretty much Rest Sleep Talk with Quick Claw. Now I know you guys have seen a lot of Rest Sleep Talk. But remember, I'm just going through the Pokedex in order. That if someone just wanted to see a random Dragalge set, it is worth mentioning, you know, Rest and Sleep Talk is a very powerful option. Because there is a lot of good to it KO potential here. And I just feel that's a really strong set. I'm not saying by having so many Rest Sleep Talks that six Pokemon on your team should have Rest Sleep Talk. No, if you want a one Rest Sleep Talk Pokemon on your team, it's not a bad idea, and there are just so many Pokemon that do so many different things. Dragalge, it has more of an offensive base. A lot of other Pokemon, they like setting up. They just like not getting knocked out. I think it can work out. So overall, Dragalge gets a huge boost with adaptability on Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you all have a nice day.